Just when you think you've seen it all, something new falls into your lap, and that's exactly what this is. This is the Aoyun 300 watt portable power station, and it looks like it's going to be the perfect solution for either camping or emergency power outages at home. So in this video, we're going to check this thing out, we're going to test it out, we're going to go through all the specs. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out the Aoyun 300 watt portable power station. And this company reached out to me, they said, hey, we've got this portable power station, we think your audience would like it, would you please show it off and explain everything that it can do. So I checked out the product link, I checked out the specs, it looked very interesting, and here it is. So we are going to definitely be testing this thing out. We're going to be checking it out and just having some fun with it. So the box does have some specs listed on it, but we're going to get to those later. We're going to go ahead and get this thing open and see what's inside and see what other kind of accessories come with it. All right, so inside the box, of course, is the power station itself. We've got a strap, and we will go ahead and attach that at some point and test it out. We've got an instruction booklet, of course, and we're going to go through some of the instructions and some of the specs. It's got a couple USB-C cables. One is a USB-C to USB-C cable, and one is a USB-A to USB-C cable, a shorter one. So I'm guessing this is going to be for charging the power station. And this one will be for charging one of your devices. And then it comes with a pretty nice, pretty solid gallium nitrate charger. And this is 65 watt power delivery charger. And that's what we're going to be using to charge this thing up. But as we take a little tour around the power station itself, you can see it's obviously meant to be tailored towards that camping slash emergency use case. It's got a little carry handle here. It's got a pop-up lantern that we're going to test out. It's got a flashlight on the front that we're going to test out. We've got AC, DC, USB, and even another DC input that we'll check out. So let's start off by talking about what some of the specs are in this thing. Now it's called the 300 watt power station because the AC port here is rated for 300 watts and we're definitely going to test that out. In addition to that, we've got a cigarette lighter port output which is 12 volts, 10 amps. And it's nice that it's labeled right on there. We've got some USB A's in here which are quick charge. We've got a USB-C in here, which is both an input and an output rated at 65 watts power delivery. And then we've got this DC input here, which can be used to either charge it by a 12 volt source or from some solar panels. And they recommend a 12 volt panel to charge that up. Now, besides the specs of all the different functions that it does, the next most important thing to talk about is what kind of batteries does it have in here? And it's got 296 watt hours of battery, which is an awful lot for a small little package like that. That's up there and even above some of the very popular products like the EcoFlow River 2 and River 3 and all of those other entry level ones from Blue Eddy and Anchor. 296, that's a lot of battery. And they are lithium ion batteries, which keeps this thing a little bit lighter. It's only about seven pounds. So that makes it super portable and even easier to carry once you attach the strap onto here. So let's go ahead and power this thing up and see what kind of battery level we have. And then we're gonna test out the charging capability. So let's push the power button. And there are supposedly 10 LEDs under here to give you an indication of what the battery percentage is. And I can see, I guess, three bars, and that might be six of the LEDs lit up. And we'll see if those are just five segments or if they have, you know, an indication of like a half a segment for each 10%. But right across the front here, we've got written 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So like I said, let's go ahead and get a cable hooked up get this thing charging, and then we'll check out these different power segments. All right, so I've got the USB-C cable plugged into this little power meter here so we can look at how much power it's actually pulling in. Since there isn't a screen like most of the other power stations that have your input and your output power. But the first thing I wanted to show you is, yes, we do have partial segments, it looks like, on the battery indicator. So it looks like it's at 60, charging up to that 70% right now. And if we take a look at the little power meter here, we can see we've got, and I know that's upside down, but 19, just about 20 volts at 3.1 amps. So about 62 watts coming in there. So that's pretty good. We got 62 watts coming out of that 65 watt gallium nitrate charger. Now, since I do have this nice Anchor Prime desktop charger here that has a really nice display that shows you exactly what's happening, I think what I want to do now is plug the cable in there and see if it's still limited to 65 watts. I'm sure it is, because that's what the specification is. But since this is able to output about 140 watts, let's just see if it can take any more than the 65. 
Okay, so this is interesting. I've got a anchor cable, which I know is rated for about 200 watts or more, and I've got it plugged into this anchor prime, and it's actually delivering 96 watts. The screen just popped out, but it's showing 96 watts. So I think it's recognizing this as a 100 watt input. Let me unplug this and plug it back in. Sometimes it shows you right on the screen here what it identifies the end device as. And it didn't save right away, but it climbed right back up to 96 again. So that's going to really help out if that turns out to be a stable way of charging this. That's going to help out in the charging speed. Of course, it's really nice that they include a 65 watt charger. But if you do have something that delivers more, looks like it might work. So I'm going to let this sit here a little bit and charge a little bit more. Make sure it's still stable at that 96 watts the whole time. And I'll be right back. All right, so I let it charge for a little bit. And it's getting up to this 80% now. And I'll tell you what, it's been rock solid at this 96 watts. And if we look at the output here, it's showing just under 20 volts at just under 5 amps. So that's pretty nice. The spec sheet did say 20 volts at 3 and a quarter amps, which would have been 65 watts. But so far, like I said, it's working great. It'll be interesting to test the output when we test the output of this to see if it is also 100 watt output or if it is truly 65 watts output. But we'll test that in a minute. In the meantime, while it was charging up, I attached the strap to it and it's got real nice swivel buckles to it it's got a padded shoulder pad thing here it's adjustable in length so that's a nice little touch makes it easy to carry around if you're going to be hiking or just carrying it from the house to the car or whatever you're doing just another option so i was pleasantly surprised by the input so let's go ahead and test some of the outputs starting with the ac output so I've got the input disconnected, so we're running solely off of batteries right now. And what I've got set up here, I've got a power meter plugged into the AC port here so we can see how much power we're drawing. And I've got my trusty little dipper over here that we're going to turn on in just a second. But first, let's turn on the AC circuit. So we've got a button right here that says AC. We'll click that. And I'm not sure if you can see in the recording or not, but there is a backlight to these showing you that they are turned on. There's a backlight on the power button. There's a backlight on the AC. None of the other ones have backlights on them yet because they're not turned on yet. But now we've got the power meter running. Let's go ahead and turn on our load here to just low. And we are drawing about 73 watts coming out of here, out of the AC port. Going to my little dipper. Let's go ahead and turn that up to high. And we are right at about 95.7 watts output. So I'm going to let that cook for a little bit, no pun intended. And just kind of watch everything, see how the battery works see if there's any fan that kicks on. And then after a few minutes, once I'm satisfied, we're gonna go ahead and plug in something that's a little bit heavier. All right, so this thing's been sitting here for a while now and it's still putting out 100 watts, basically. I haven't heard any kind of fan kick on yet, but I don't feel the thing getting warm either. No weird smells, no weird sounds. So that's always a good thing. So it looks like it's working great. Think about that, you got a little crock pot there that can make some queso and if you think about that it's taken 100 watts if this was fully charged then you'd get pretty close to two and a half to three hours worth of output onto that thing so think if you were tailgating and wanted to make some queso then you could certainly do that so let's go ahead and put the little dipper away i'm going to grab something that's a little bit stronger a little bit more power hungry and we'll see how it reacts all right so still testing out the ac circuit i've got a little space heater here and it's got two settings the low setting is definitely under the 300 watts. The high setting is usually above that, so I'm only going to test the low setting. So let's go ahead and switch that on. And we are now pulling 181 watts. And if I was to plug this thing, the same space heater, into the wall right now, it would pull probably about 230 is what it usually pulls. So it's pulling a little bit less power, and that's probably just a matter of the inverter in here. It's probably like a modified sine wave versus a pure sine wave, but it's definitely working. It's definitely putting out heat. So let me let that sit for a little bit and see how it performs. All right, so it's still going strong. No glitches, no weird smells, no weird noises. So I'm happy. Now I get people ask me all the time when I review other power stations, you know, how long can this thing run a space heater? And my answer is always the same thing. Just don't do it. Space heaters are going to eat up your battery. Find some other way of providing heat. It just doesn't make sense to run a heater off of a small power station. So I'm happy with the AC output. I think the next thing I want to test is going to be the USB-C output. So let me go get something set up to test that out and I'll be right back. All right, so to test out this USB-C output here, I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to plug this MacBook Pro into it, and I'm going to use the MacBook Pro to tell me what kind of charger it thinks it's plugged into. 
So that'll tell me what the output specifications of this port should be. Then after we do that, I'm going to go ahead and plug my inline power meter here in just to see how much it's delivering to the MacBook Pro. So let's start off by turning on the USB-C output and we're going to plug in this cable that's plugged into the MacBook Pro. And it sees that it's charging, so I'm going to go right in here into the system report and then down to power. And then I'm going to scroll down and it says that it's plugged into a 60 watt charger. So that doesn't mean that the output is capped at 60 watts here, it just means that that's the kind of charger that it thinks it's plugged into. So that's probably just based on whatever voltage and current it sees coming from it. But let me go ahead and put this inline watt meter into it, and we'll see how much it's actually delivering. And of course this is going to vary depending on how much power the laptop is requesting. So this is not an indication of what the maximum output is, it's just what the current output is. And it's showing about 20 volts at 1 amps. So a little over 1 amp, so about 23, 24 watts. And like I said, that's going to fluctuate based on what the laptop needs, based on what it's doing, what the charge state is. But the bottom line is, it works. And if the MacBook thinks that it's plugged into a 60 watt charger, then I've got no doubt that this will put out at least 60 watts. In fact, it's already going up to about 45 right now and still climbing. So let me go ahead and grab something to test out the 12 volt output. In fact, we're up to 57 watts, 58 watts. So that's going great, but I'll grab something for that, and I'll be right back. All right, so to test out the cigarette lighter port here, the best way I can test it out to see how much power is actually coming out of it is to use this 12 volt to XT60 cable here, and I'm going to plug that into this Anchor Solix C300 DC, and the anchor will be able to tell me on the screen how much power it's drawing through this cable. So let's go ahead and turn on the DC output. Let's plug in our XT60 connector. And let's bring the anchor in a little bit closer. And it is showing down here 89 watts. And I believe it has an input max of 100 watts. So getting 89 watts out of what should be, you know, 12 volts at a 10 amp max, that's pretty good. And that's no real surprise. This is just simply a DC output. So I fully expected it to work fine. So let's go ahead and unplug some of this stuff. And we're going to start testing out some of the other features like the lights. All right, so this has two different lights that we're going to test out. The first one is going to be this lantern here, which is going to pop up and give us 360 degree illumination. So let's go ahead and see what kind of settings it has. So I'm going to click the button once. And that's kind of a dim, cool light. Let's click it again. And I would call that a dim, warm light. Click it a third time. So that is a very bright, cool light. Next one is a very bright warm light, and then it turns off. Now when I say dim on those first two settings, I don't mean that it's actually dim, I just mean dimmer than the other settings. So you have basically a low and a high version of both the cool light and the warm light. And I would imagine that this setting right here, even though you can probably barely see it with all the studio lights on here, if this was in a camping setting, it would definitely illuminate the area and it's probably drawing very little battery. So let's go ahead and test out the flashlight, or I guess spotlight, I would call it. And I'm just gonna leave it pointing that way so it's not shooting right into the camera, and we'll see what different settings we have. So here's the first button. All right, so that's gonna be, I guess, the low setting. That's gonna be the second setting, a little bit brighter. Third one is brighter still, and the fourth one is going to flash, so if you have any sensitivity to flashing, please look away now. And then the fifth one is going to be an SOS strobe. So it's flashing through an SOS pattern, and then click it again, it turns off. So again, very handy, whether you need a spotlight or just like a camp lantern, this power station's got you covered. Alright, one last thing to show you here is on the back is a little netted area here and it's actually made out of like a rubber or silicone or something and it is obviously expandable so you can actually put your charger and your little cables right in here so that's a nice touch and i think that's just about all the features so let me turn this guy back off and kind of wrap this up with some final thoughts so we tested out basically everything we tested out the ac the dc the USB C. I didn't test out the usb a's but i'm sure they work just fine we tested out the lantern and the light, and we tested the charging input. And basically, 
it does everything that it's advertising that it does. And in fact, it actually charges at a quicker rate than what it advertises. So that's nice. So if you're looking for something like this for either camping or just to keep in the house for an emergency, then this will definitely do the job. You can charge up these lithium batteries and then just check it every couple months because these lithium batteries are going to stay charged up pretty nicely. But just top it off every couple months and it's going to be ready for you whenever you have a power outage or when you want to go have some fun with it. Now, if you're interested in checking this out, I'm going to leave a link down below. And then also, once you go to that link, make sure you check for a coupon because right now, as of the time of recording, they're offering 40% off. So go check that out. But as we wrap this up, I want to thank Ayun again for sending this out to me to test out. Hopefully this review was helpful to you. If it was, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all about it, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. I've got lots of other reviews on power stations, solar generators, power banks, and then just a plethora of other geeky stuff. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.